is Rose here. Hi guys, I am Rose here, here with um, Andrew. Andrew. He is yes. uh, my new he friend. Is, uh, <laughs> He's um, over, hi, everybody. Sorry, he's over oh, in ahead. Florida. Uh, we're here. Uh, I'm here in California and decided to do a little bit of an interview podcast with him and um, listen to some of your guys' questions and just kind of chat. So, Andrew, if you want to go ahead, yeah. we'll take it away. All right, so this will be a little bit of um, questions. Uh, some of these have had, like, um, I've had trouble coming with some of these questions because I lost paper anyways. Uh, I guess I'll just go ahead and ask the first question. Um, I've You told us this before, but for people that are new to your channel, um, I guess I'll just ask you, where do you live, really? I live in Southern California. I've been here my entire life. I have... Um, my few generations before me were all from um, the east, so I mean like east of the U.S., like Missouri. But basically, yeah, Southern California, very south. Southern California my whole life. Your whole life? So you grew up there then, right? Yes. Yep. Uh, oh, wow. Because um, I was mistaken in your picture. I thought you were living in Alaska because it was snowing and it looked like you had a snow dog or something like that. It was a picture? Oh, actually, yeah, that was a that was a short little video that I took up in the mountains. So um, where I live, we never get any snow. I think it snowed here once in my lifetime, but the moment that it hit the ground, it was it just melted. And so when Californians Californians want to see the snow, they have to drive north up to the mountains, and that's what I did. I drove up to the mountains where it had snowed, and I brought my dog who had never seen snow before. Oh. So. It looks like, um, because I was, it looked like, um, a, some sort of snow wolf or something. I don't really know the name, but. Yeah, anyway. she's an Australian shepherd. She does look kind of like a, she's got like the, the hair, hair like one of those snow dogs. Well, uh, next question. What got you started on YouTube? Like, um, has anyone ever, did someone induce you to it? Like, what happened? Uh, basically, the story, the, my first exposure to a Let's Play, I was playing Vampire the Masquerade. And if I can go on a little bit of a tangent, that's kind of a funny story. I love Vampire the Masquerade because it's very open-ended. You can make lots of decisions. You can make your own character. You can be completely insane if you like. But there's this part where there's a haunted hotel, and I was so scared I literally could not play it I stopped when I got to the hotel and I would not play it until my one of my friends could come over play through it for me and then give the game back to me oh wow <laughs> that's how actually, bad it was actually I think I think it was vampire masquerade uh, I think there was a girl like she had a gun like she had two uh, I forgot what it's called I think it was mixed personality or something Anyways, like, it was two people, it was like two people were living yeah. in one, that one girl, she was crazy. Yeah, that's right, there was that one girl, and she had, she was actually two, she was two sisters in one body. Yeah, oh. I remember that. Yeah, so. that's what I said. And I and that uh, that kind of dark stuff was really um, enticing and interesting to me. But I tell you, I tried to do like maybe the first five minutes of the haunted hotel, and I literally broke out into a sweat. I could <laughs> not do it. <laughs> so, anyways, after my friend played through that section for me, I got past it. And then there was a part later on where I got I got stuck. I didn't know where I was supposed to go. I kept dying, and I thought, what? So I had to look up help online. So I go to yeah. YouTube. I go to YouTube and I just type in Vampire the Masquerade uh, Malkavian Mansion because that's where I was. Because I needed somebody to show me literally where I need to go. <laughs> and I came that, <laughs> Yeah. It happens to me so much. It happens like all the time. It's this really gay game and then I play it and it's like I just got lost and you can't do it anymore. You know, I got lost. And at that time... Um, I was a kid, I would play games, like, you know, some games like that, um, and I get stuck. I really like the game, but I get stuck, and I didn't know about YouTube at the time, because I was just a kid. My brother never introduced me into it, so I didn't know about YouTube, and I was just stuck there, and I never finished the games. There were so many games I started, but never ended up finishing it. Yeah, so. and after, um... When I was younger, there, there were no videos. You had to find a text-based web page that was like Word, you know, 
trying to describe in words what you need to be looking for. So <laughs> it was really great when I when we, when I found out that you could finally look that stuff up on YouTube. Yes. And I came across Dark Chiron, and just oh. yeah, yes, just by watching that single video of him getting out of the Malkavian mansion his personality, his commentary, just what he was saying and what he was doing was like, it was so entertaining. It was hilarious and I really enjoyed it. And that's how I got hooked on Let's Plays. Shortly after that, I, I found Manga Minx and I just really loved what they did and it gave me countless hours of entertainment. And then finally, at one point, I found myself you know, t doing my own inner monologue of, well, this is what I would be saying right now. This is what I would say right now in this situation. And uh, a lot of people have told me I'm pretty weird. <laughs> like my personality is very, my personality is very different from a lot of uh, normal people. Yes. I don't really think it's weird at all. In fact, <laughs> I think it's really entertaining. I love your videos. You're so unique and different from anyone else. And I actually really like it. Oh. I really like it. Well, thank you. I'm very glad that, that people think so. <laughs> so that's what, that's how I ended up getting into it, was uh, I just thought, hey, I have something interesting to say. I have something important to say. But like you, I also hate scary games. <laughs> yeah. I don't hate it. But I'm not into scary games. Um, not as much. Not, I'm not into horror games as much as uh, just... I don't. I don't really like horror games. Yeah. Uh, but I do love. I do love RPGs, though. That's what I'm into. Yeah. Horror. Horror is hard for me to do. It really is. Um. And I really do hope, though. Uh. Although it is horror, I would really love it if you do Witch House. That's the one I've been dying to wait for you to see. Uh, ah, to see. Witch's House. Witch okay. Yeah. Um, it's on my I, computer right now. The only thing is, is I haven't been able to figure out a way to, to get the um. The, the game sound and the game sound is really important there's atmospheric yes, music so. but I will tell you there is one thing you must remember okay um whenever you read something uh, I'm not gonna spoil anything but whenever you read something do always like uh, read it you know just memorize it yeah uh, you know there'll be something that is crazy at the end that I found out myself and I got hundreds of likes because I commented this and I just figured this out when I was watching because I was paying attention. And it's amazing if you look back um, and compare it and stuff. But anyways, just, just pay attention. Yes, just try and memorize what you read because there is something crazy. Um, but you could get a different ending which will ruin everything. Uh-oh. So, I'll try so, not to get that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, there will be a part where uh, it's possible you could get a different ending. So, um, if I will try and comment, maybe if you're going to get a different ending or not, um, but there is something important, though, okay. that uh, I really hope you see. Okay, next question. Do you have any plans for the future, um, for the future for yourself, not as in for YouTube? Oh, yeah, I have some plans. Um actually just had a birthday um a week ago two two oh, weeks ago birthday? yeah just happy had a birthday. Late birthday thank you i wasn't too thrilled about it because you know another year older but um wow. as far as plans for myself and my future i'm i'm i've pretty much always been a hopeless romantic so i'm for my plans for my future are basically you know finding the one and uh yeah. you know settling down and yeah, having uh, having a family, and probably and as far as a career, I've never put that much um, emphasis on having a career determine uh, or money determine my happiness level with my life. So as long as I can find something that you know takes care of me and that I don't hate doing every day, uh, I did do medical. I did healthcare for a while, and I really liked. Yeah, I really liked working with the people, and I liked helping people, and I liked saving people's lives, but... Um, yeah, that's, were... what was. <laughs> yep, she, that's what she's always loved. She'd always loved to um, help people because, well, uh, she's had a hard life as a kid, so... so right. She's always... So, um, as of right now, I kind of like to find a more indirect way to help people. 
So um, maybe like working in a hospital, but not working directly with the patients. Yes, I see what you mean. Yeah. Um, okay, the next question. How long do you think you'll be doing this? Like, uh, you know, doing YouTube videos. I haven't the slightest clue. <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah, I wish it could happen forever, but... I know, I know. It's, it's um... Well, it kind of just depends on what's going on in, in my life. Hopefully things are going to uh, turn up a little bit more and be a little bit easier for me to enjoy my games. Um, and as long as I have the time to do it, um, I w it's something I would really, really like to continue doing. I think that even if it got to a point where I didn't have the time to be very active, I would still be releasing videos, um, you know, occasionally. Like maybe do spotlights instead of like longer videos that are a spotlight rather than an entire series if I ever just couldn't produce enough. Okay. Yeah. Um, next question. Okay. Uh, oh, that popped up. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what are you planning um, for, on doing for a career? Um, for my career, I guess this kind of goes back to the last one. I ultimately I'd like to be in healthcare administration, so that would be my um, my indirect way of helping people. You know, working in a hospital is something that I really like doing, so I feel like it's contributing to you know people's welfare. But um, honestly, when I was working directly with people, like in the ER and and that kind of thing. It wasn't the patients or the people, or it wasn't the patients that got me out of it. It was the other nurses and the doctors and the other staff who were just, a lot of them, very desensitized and non-compassionate, insensitive, and sometimes just downright malicious to their patients. And that is just something that I decided I could not be around, so. Um, actually, my mom, as a nurse, uh, you know, some of her co-workers, they don't give the meds at the right time. They're just, you know, they're on the computer. They have a computer there. So they just sit there and go on Facebook and stuff like that instead of actually doing their job. Right. So, yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I, I think one of the breaking points for me was that I was, uh, there was a really horrible rollover um, traffic collision. And this woman came in and um, she was there for an hour and a half just laying in her bed with, well, let's just say really severe injuries, and um, because she was a drunk driver, and um, the, the doctors and the nurses, nobody gave her pain medication, and when I inquired about it, they just said, she was a drunk driver, she can wait. And I'm thinking, okay, she was a drunk driver, but you have no right to judge this person. You have no right to be purposely allowing them to suffer. You know, That's, it's, you're not the judge. <laughs> that is awful. Um, my mom's actually, a, um, she works in a VA, which is a veteran hospital. Oh, that's great. Yeah, but it's a little bit sad how most of, um, most of the injuries aren't in, uh, aren't in from, like, the military from, uh, you know, damage in, or hurt in war. Uh -huh. Instead, they were all, like, they got in car accidents. That's what most of them are. Uh. Car accidents, you know, drinking or something like that. Uh, but my mom actually has a patient where some of them, uh, this patient is very, very um, famous. Uh, his name is Joel. Well, he's not very, very famous, but he's been in magazines before. His name is Joel. Um, I believe, I forgot, uh, I forgot what's, um, what happened to him. I think it was, he was in a helicopter, it fell down, that kind of a stuff, and he was burned. Oh, so. My. Yeah. And oh, but you also. Your, oh, go ahead. Did he come to your your mother's VA hospital? Yes, he did, and that was her patient. Wow. So it was pretty awful. He had burns all over him. I saw him, but I won't go into too much detail. <laughs> no, I think so. it's really great to be working. I want. I wanted to be a. Uh, a military nurse uh, for a while because I just think it's really great to be not only helping you're not just helping a human being but you're helping somebody who's serving your country and yes. I just have so much respect for that that's very yes but you also mentioned that uh, you would like to be a language arts teacher 
which I thought is awesome. You know, I would love you <laughs> as a language arts teacher. But yeah, yeah that's I'd, another direct way of helping people. Yeah, I love language arts. I love reading. I like. Um, I just like written word. I find it a lot easier to express myself with uh, with written word. And I just think it's so cool that you could just write it down on paper and give it to somebody else, and you can elicit the feelings that you wanted in that person by them yes. reading it. And it could be anything. Um, uh, you know, in acting, you know, acting, you're making somebody yes. believe something that's not really there. Yes. Um, so it's kind of the same thing. Like, uh, what's his face? The super famous Stephen Stephen King. Right? Oh yes, Stephen King. Yes. Right. Whole, so uh, uh, he's he writes horror stuff, and um, I think that he does a really great job because this stuff isn't stuff that happens that he's writing down. It came from his imagination, and it's just really famous now. Yes. Yeah, it's very famous. Uh, I actually used to hate reading. Um, but now all of a sudden, ever since I started watching your videos, I don't know why, but <laughs> after that, I liked reading. I don't know why. Yes! So Mission accomplished. I actually <laughs> started to like reading. That's awesome. As a kid, I actually hated reading so much. And I remember whenever we had, like, the reading period, I, I would sit there and go to sleep. You know, the little <laughs> period we had, um, we had, there was a period where, um, you know, there'd be 30 minutes of reading. And for me, I would just sit there. I'd pretend I'm reading. I would hold it, and my eyes would be closed, and I'd be sleeping. <laughs> and then I fell asleep, and then the teacher caught me. So, yeah, she told me to wake up. Oh, gosh. I've been falling asleep lately because I really hated reading. And then all of a sudden, I started to watch your videos, and I liked reading. Uh, and then I also hated writing, too, because I, before, I had no, um, I'm not very creative, really. Right. It does uh, take practice. practice. It takes yes. a lot of practice. Yeah. What got me into reading so much is I this is this is just a cliche story, but it's really true. It was true in my life that I started reading because I didn't I wanted to be living somewhere else. I wanted to be living a different life. Um, when I was young, when I was about your age or you know then older as a teenager, I still read so much because I would rather be in that world um, than than where I was at the time. Yes. Uh, I believe you said you weren't very wealthy um, before. No, you know? we were very poor. Yeah. yeah. It must be tough. So I guess it would be nice to read then. Yeah, we didn't uh, we didn't have video games back then. Um we had a we had like a not second hand, it was like third hand computer and it played your most basic DOS games like Simant. <laughs> uh, oh. if anybody remembers that. And my dad played it because I was a bit young to be, be to be on it. But um I, you know, we had those really basic games, and so what I did instead was I, re was I read. I didn't have any friends. I had no friends growing up, really, just because I was um, different. Personality-wise, yeah. it was very different. So I just spent my time reading, and as sad as it sounds, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but my, my friends were the characters that I was reading about. Yeah. Well, actually, it's good because then, you know, people, it's inspiring for those people, you know, people should be a lot more grateful about um, what they have, though, you know, a lot yeah. of people, they seem like they have an awful life, but I think you should be a little bit more grateful, though, you know, mm -hmm. about what you have now. Uh, you know, I, there was a little quote I saw that said, you know, somebody, you might not want your, you might, you may want um, somebody else's life, but somebody else's will want your life, so. Yeah, that's very true. It's very true. Uh, let's see here. Um, wait, which question did I ask? Oh, yes, you're on right here. What was your past like before YouTube? Like, what did you do before you started YouTube? Oh, my. My past. Hmm. That was... Hmm. What was my past like? Well, I was kind of doing the same thing as I was doing after I started YouTube. I was... Uh, I was caregiving for my grandfather who was very very old and uh, I did that for five years so um, I did it before I started YouTube and I did it after up until he died um, last year very sorry yeah that's okay I, I was also um, going I was going to school uh, part-time to you know just get my education and get job yes. skills and that kind of thing but uh, before I was caregiving for my grandfather, I was, like I said, in the medical field. I was an EMT, and um, I 
did some work on ambulances and in hospitals and that kind of thing. Yes. Uh, yep. Let's see here. Let's pass the book. What do some of your relatives think um, about the idea of gaming and recording videos? Like, what do they think of what you're doing right now? <laughs> right? I don't. I don't actually think that any of them know that I do this. <laughs> So, none of them know that you're taking videos and you have thousands, like, let me see, I believe you had like 6,000 subscribers, you're almost that close. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's way more than I ever expected that I would ever have, um, but also in the grand scheme of things, it's it's not really that much compared to, you know, your really well-known Let's Players or, or YouTubers. Yes. But no, I, I'm pretty sure that nobody in my family knows that I do this, and if they did, they'd probably think I was even more weird than they already thought I was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, a lot of my cousins, I didn't even know how they got to my channel, but somehow <laughs> they managed to find out that I have a YouTube channel. I have no idea how they found out, because honestly, I don't really feel comfortable telling, um, you know, telling my family about how I have a YouTube channel and I did videos. Um, I deleted some of my videos. They weren't they weren't really good. Um, like the quality was awful. It didn't feel right, so I don't really have any videos posted right now. And I'm trying to make I wanted to make AMVs, but I don't know how to um, pull out video clips, so that's uh, what I was planning on doing. Yeah, I think um, I'd feel pr I would feel pretty uncomfortable if people in my family or my relatives um, watched my videos because that's what I felt like you know I don't want anyone <laughs> watching my videos it would feel very uncomfortable for yes. me like very very uncomfortable and you know I wouldn't like you know it just doesn't feel right when you play a game and then you're uh, seeing your what uh, everyone's seeing what you're doing right now you know you want to talk to all the other people I feel more comfortable actually making videos so strangers watch it instead of my relatives watching. Yeah, I feel exactly the same way because I mean you're thinking, oh no, what is my relative going to think about what I just said? What are they going to think about this and that? Yeah. Okay. What, uh, what just, oh, that's the same question I was asked. <laughs> uh, let me put a little X by what I've asked you. Okay. Um, will you ever do Twitch videos like um, live stream? Really? I have been looking seriously into doing live stream. Um, it wouldn't be, you know, with face cam, which I get asked a lot. I very Actually, that was going to be one of my questions. I asked you this question. <laughs> um, I asked you this question before. Um, well, uh, why no face cam? That was my question. Oh, that was you. Okay. Yeah, that was me. Um, I asked you why no face cam, and uh, you said you replied back saying, you know, live streams in the future, but... I'm just uh, I'm asking this question so that way other people know. So right, um, no, yeah, no, probably, probably never, face cam ever. Um, <laughs> for for a couple of reasons. Um, the first reason is because ever since I first started, I've basically used um, Manga Minx as my role model on how I should be running, um, or not really how I should be running, or, but basically how to take on having a YouTube channel and how involved I need to be and how how much I respond how much you know this and that uh, because when I first start I'm thinking do I need to reply to every single comment is it okay well, if I I yeah um, I feel that it would be a little bit weird if you just showed your face you you just started you know be, you just showed your face to like everybody that would be a little bit weird I guess you know yeah, and just because since Man Manga Minx made the decision to not do face cam, and I know, I know a lot of other people on on YouTube who won't do face cam, and um, it's because I don't think that it, it my face should be taking away from the video. I wouldn't want people yes. to be watching my face and not watching Instead the video. And honestly, I don't want to deal with the, uh, oh, you don't look like how I thought you looked like, or you, oh. I, I just don't need those kind of comments. I mean, what I, <laughs> what I do is my voice and the game, and that's it. Actually, uh, I'm going to tell you what I thought you looked like. I was just thinking that you looked like all pretty, and then you had blonde hair, actually. <laughs> I thought you were pretty, and you were like skinny. That's what I was thinking in my head. I had no idea. Then I saw a video, and I was like, you still look great, though. You still do, though. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but um yeah see in my head i was thinking you know you showed your fit you showed yourself already in one video so i was thinking 
why aren't you going to show yourself again? I mean, it's already over. You might as well show yourself again. That's what I was thinking in my head. But I understand now, though. I understand. Um, what I was thinking is, if you're going to do a face cam, you don't. I don't think you should. I think the only um, videos you should really do face cam for. I was thinking you should only do it for um, for uh, horror games. That's what I was thinking because everyone loves to see reactions mm -hmm. uh, to what happens. And Witch House, especially. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking. That'd be great because Witch House has some crazy jump scares. Yeah. Yeah, still probably not going to though because um, I, also I have the same kind of reason as Mega Minx. I I don't I don't have hugely o above and beyond self esteem, and I just would rather just not even add yeah. that component of having to. Yeah. Take it. <laughs> I understand. Okay, the next question. Um. How do you feel like your uh, YouTube, I couldn't really explain how to put this, but how do you feel about your YouTube? How has it grown over these years since you started? How do you feel about that? Um, like I said, I, I, ended, I have now way more subscribers and viewers than I ever thought I would. And also the quality of the people who leave me comments and message yes. me is so amazing. I am exceptionally lucky to have the viewership that I do because one of my biggest concerns when I first started was nasty people, trolls, you know, yeah. people just criticizing and Everyone criticizing. Is, I've seen the comments on your videos. Everyone seems very supporting. Um, supportive. They are extremely supportive and I feel that um, I feel that honestly they deserve more out of me than what I give them because in my recent update I just said things weren't really going so well in my personal life and it was really difficult for me to do my best and um, and I wish that I could do that because everybody is just so kind to me I was not expecting that at all yeah well you are very unique so if anyone's gonna be watching your videos it's gonna be more of the nicer smarter people you know if you think about it if it's like PewDiePie I'm pretty sure we're gonna be <laughs> live you know. I, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Um, I mean, on some of my most popular videos where it'll like show up in the search queue or whatever, I do get a lot of comments like STFU or shut up and play the game or blah, blah, blah. And I yeah. really don't, I don't even let those phase me because if that's what they want, that's not what I can provide for them. I think so I saw your Tumblr. Um, it was one of the quotes, the best way to deal with them. Um, I think it was like the best way to deal with uh, criticism or something like that is just uh, what, what was it? I forgot what it was. Uh, it was um, I don't remember. I think it was might have been Aristotle. It was some philosopher. It says um, the only way to escape criticism is to say some say nothing, do nothing, and be nothing. Yes, that's exactly it. I think that's very good though. Yeah, I do like reading co quotes and stuff like that. Uh, not a lot of people are interested in what I am, like piano, maybe we'll into rock or pop or something like that, uh, around people my age. Okay, next question. Um, how's your life currently like? Um, as in, have you had any troubles lately? Um, let's see how much I can get into. Uh, so basically for anybody who hasn't really been keeping up for the last, um, less than a year, probably the, like the last eight months or so. Um, I was a care, I was a caregiver for my grandfather and he, um, he passed away last December at the very end of the year. And that was a really difficult time for me. Uh, everything kind of got turned upside down. I needed to find a new place to live because, um, um, another family member had inherited the house and I wasn't able to live there anymore um, after he passed away and uh, so and then I needed to immediately find um, another another job and things actually worked out really good at the beginning of the year I found a place to live and I had some great opportunities in front of me for uh, employment but then kind of all of those honestly all of those opportunities fell through and none of them worked out, so I've been really stressed out about um, that, not being able to, to find what I'm looking for. And then in my, in my personal life, yeah, I have some really tough stuff going on right now. I don't, I don't really think I can get into it right now, but yeah. just, 
Awesome. Yeah. On a relationship level, I've just been experiencing a lot of hardship that's been really difficult for me to keep it together on. Oh, one second. Is my head even in the video? Yes, I'm, oh. it is. Okay, I'm making sure. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I actually shedded a tear in that video with oh. your uh, dying. I was really very, very sad. Very, very sorry about that. Oh, that's all right. He uh, he was an a really amazing person. He he did so many incredible things throughout his life, and he was very kind to me. He was probably the closest um, family member that I had because of just the way he supported me and everything that I did. But I was not sad because he's with my grandmother now, and he lived just probably the most incredible life that he could have. Yes. I've been... Uh thinking, you know, how grateful I should be about um, how, where I am right now. Uh, although it's not the greatest position um, lately, right now, at the moment. Uh, you know, I have been, my parents, I haven't been seeing them lately, that kind of a thing. Uh, it's not the greatest, but I should be very happy. Um, I have food on the table, stuff like that. And my brother, everyone's very supportive of me. Um, I, my mom, uh, there is everyone in the Philippines. I have like 60 cousins, 60, it's crazy. Wow. Uh, and I have so many cousins, and then my mom, everyone's also supportive. They always think I'm the, uh, they always look at me as like the future. They always look at me as the future um, for the family. And, oh. you know, also supportive. They think I'm very talented, that kind of stuff. And I'm very, very happy that people think of me as this, like this. Um, and I'm very happy about this. Yeah, does but, it I imagine it would kind of put a lot of pressure on you, too, though. Yeah, it does, though. Sometimes my mom's like, play piano, stuff like that in front of them. And uh. it kind of doesn't make me feel comfortable sometimes, where it's just like that, and everyone's looking at me through Skype. You know, I have all my cousins there. And then, you know, you think about it, and it's like they're depending on me. And mm -hmm. I don't feel like... Uh, Sometimes it doesn't feel comfortable, though. Yeah, just keep in mind what you like and what's important to you, and just keep that in mind for your future, because you're the one living your life. Nobody will ever live your life, so you've got to do what's, what's going to be best and happiest for you. Life is short, so, you know, you should spend it best, you know, while you can. Spend it well. Yep. So, let's see here. What, um, what are your future plans uh, and some of the games coming up or videos coming up? Um, well, I need, um, let's see, what is on my desktop right now? I'll tell you right now, on my desktop is Downfall, which is, um, the... Downfall. Yeah, yep. there are going to be some parts, um, I've seen Manga Minx play, there are going to be some parts where you're going to want to block out some content. Okay. Uh, there is, like, uh, <laughs> a little bit of censorship it. there. Yes, a little okay. bit of censorship. Um, when I, when I get technical issues, um, set straight I mean honestly I'm not very good with technical recording programs I'm good with computers but I'm in no way an expert on recording and programs and neither am I that kind of thing so once I get it sorted out you'll be seeing downfall pretty consistently I'm really excited to see it because I love the cat lady mm -hmm. um, but it's then really good harvester moon makes really good games they're yeah. a little bit dark they're a little bit dark is from what it seems. Mm -hmm. it, um, well, like, for me, it's was... perfect. It's I mean, I've always yes. had a dark kind of side to my personality. Despite being really happy and cheerful a lot of the times, there's definitely a darker kind of um, side that can relate to those things that happen. Yes. Um, my friend Rose is actually like you. Uh, she has like a little bit of darker side, but she gets bullied. I feel very, very bad about her, though. Yeah. She gets bullied at school. Bullying is um, a travesty. I'm, it needs to be eliminated. <laughs> yeah. Um, nobody knows her, so I hopefully um, she doesn't mind me saying that. But mm -hmm. nobody knows who she is, and nobody knows uh, her real name's not Rose, so. Oh, okay. okay. Well, if anybody I, knows her and you're bullying her, stop it. I will kick <laughs> your ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's actually uh, going to high school next year. Oh, good. Uh, you know, um, you know high school is usually part. better than middle school. Yes. Um, obviously, it's pretty... I don't really like um, how mid, uh, middle school is going so far. There has been so many fights right now um, at the moment. There has been so many... so Lots and lots of fights just happening. Yeah. So, yeah. There has been fights. Actually, I had filed a bully report um, because some kid 
uh, he pushed me down the stairs. So, oh wow! I don't even know why. He pushed me down the stairs, and I filed a bully report on that, though. And well, it's he got good that they have things like. I'm really glad to hear that they have things like bully reports. Now. Yes, it's a little slip of paper. You get to um, have like you write down when you want to have it. Uh, a talk with the uh, guidance counselor, and what happens is she gave me a slip of paper. She said write down what he did and stuff like that. Who was the victim? Yada yada. And it doesn't necessarily have to be. Um, you don't have to be the victim. It could be the victim of somebody else, and you could file the report for them. Uh, yeah, so if you're you're witness to bullying. Yes, you can always file it. That's but, great. Yeah. That's a really great system to have. I'm very glad to hear that. But there is one thing I didn't really like. We're going to be having uniforms. <laughs> really? Yes. But my mom thinks it's a good idea, and I, I understand what she thinks. She also thinks it looks a lot more professional because in like all the other foreign countries, they always look a lot more smarter and professional. Yeah, um, that that's true. Yeah. It kind of gives you, um, like like you said, more professional. I actually would have loved to have um, uniforms at my school, but only for a couple of a uh, couple different reasons. Um, like I said, my family was really not uh, was pretty poor growing up, and I yeah, could that's, not. That's, uh, yeah, I could not afford. Afford. Uh, most of my clothes were hand-me-downs from my older relatives and basically that was another contributing factor to me getting bullied because I didn't have the best, yeah. the newest that's, of this. That's the reason why they want to do it. Um, you know, the, the two reasons, the two main reasons I believe they're doing it is one for dress code, two for um, bullying because, you know, people will bully you for what you wear. You know, they'll always try and find something to, um, you know. Yeah. Mess you up with. All right. Next question. Um, what's the toughest challenge you faced so far in the past year? The toughest challenge I faced is this in any particular area? Um, not really. I guess just anything. Okay. Any um. Wow. I'm actually gonna have to think about that. Hmm. <laughs> the toughest challenge I faced in the last year? Well, my life has certainly changed drastically in the last year with uh, moving locations and then changing uh, changing jobs, but um, uh, basically the, the, the best thing in my life that I've had for the last year was uh, the relationship that I'm in. And um, so I would say that my grandfather passing away is, is the, was the hardest, but it, um, but it wasn't because I had this relationship that was um, just incredibly supportive and there for me and stable and reliable and just wonderful. But um, the, the hardship that I'm going through right now at, that I've been speaking of very evasively is uh, problems with that relationship. So I'm probably going to have to say that right now is actually, yeah, definitely right now is the hardest, um, is the biggest hardship that I faced in a couple years now because I, you know, there's uh, emotions and stuff that's attached. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I see. But... Um, random question that's not on the paper. Um, oh, go ahead. What do you feel more comfortable, uh, do you feel more comfortable with a lot more people, or do you feel, um, like, uh, feel comfortable with a little bit more people, um, watching, or did you feel more comfortable beginning? Like, uh, starting off YouTube, did you feel more comfortable, or did you feel more comfortable now? I definitely feel more comfortable now because when I first started I didn't know what to expect or people were gonna hate me and be nasty but um, now I just when I do get something nasty all I have to do is just annoyed. click click a page away and then I have this overwhelming amount of positive responses from people that really make me feel good about myself and validate what I'm doing so I mean well, even though it's more people I guess it, I should be more nervous but yeah. I'm not. Yeah. Because, you know, my what I think, if people are going to, you know, if you're not going to say anything good, don't say anything at all. Yeah. But all, if you don't like a video, you could just click away. Yeah. But, I don't really understand why some people have to uh, feel the need to, like, leave their um, non-constructive um, complaints about a video. Or why do you even have to hit the down button and dislike a video? If you don't like it, just click, you know, don't watch it. Don't watch the next one. You don't have to 
be malicious and stuff. I mean, some people don't like my style. That's perfectly fine. But yeah. there's no reason to be rude and be like STFU and, you know, that yeah, kind know. of stuff. Stupid. But, you know, you're ne never, never, <laughs> there's not going to be any time that we're going to be able to fix that. So, right. That's never going to stop, sadly. Yeah, I, uh, I heard this. I don't even know what we call it, uh, this words of wisdom once, and uh, it, it just stuck with me because it's kind of silly, and it's uh, dogs never bark at parked cars, which, which means that, um, you know, if you're going somewhere in your life, you know, dogs are going to bark at you, so people are going to criticize you, they're going to try to pull you down, but well, if you're parked, and you're not going nowhere, then obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, here's a question. Uh, well, I guess I can't ask this question anymore because you sort of asked it and it was, have you been getting any negative comments in your videos, which you seem, you've been, you've been saying you have been getting uh, all positive, but it's, it seems, I guess it's pretty rare for you to be getting... Um, to be getting all these negative comments. Yeah, it's it's pretty rare with one exception of one one occasion that happened a bit earlier this year that just I just kind of let go. Um, but to be perfectly honest, when I ha I haven't really been feeling that great because of circumstances and I haven't been checking a lot of replies. So I I do check some of them, but not all of them because it's it's just harder to, you know, see those and not really feel that great about them, but I do, because they're my older videos. The newer videos, like, I'll, I'll check them uh, for about a week. I'll check those videos and see what comments are on there, because they're usually from the people who are the most, um, I don't know, I guess devoted to my channel who see them the first week that they're out. <laughs> yes. Okay, next question. Um... Are you planning on playing with any other YouTubers in the future? I would really, really love to do a co-op of, uh, yeah. of a game with, with um, some other YouTubers, like, like my, my mentors, or they don't know they're my mentors, but they are. <laughs> <laughs> so I would love to, but I think that I am so shy that I would just be too embarrassed and too shy to, to do that. Um, the, Davon Refney, basically you've been hearing about since the very beginning, is a close friend of mine that I do some games with, and we're planning on oh. doing a co-op in the very near future, so I'm hoping that that's going to come together really well. You know, I'm going to be getting a laptop, actually, uh, pretty soon, which ah. will be great. It'll be so much better now, because I honestly hate this computer at the moment. But the only thing I don't like is Windows 8. I really don't like Windows 8 at the moment. Uh... If I, I really don't, uh, I pretended I kind of liked it, but really I don't. It's because uh, they've changed so much, I can't navigate what to do. There's actually an option to open a file, like, do you want to open it with Internet Explorer? Do you want to open it with this? And I don't know what to open it with because it's all changed. And instead of just pressing open, uh, it's changed where you have to choose what do you want to open it with. Like, if I was to put it with open it with Internet Explorer, what happens is it will never give me the choice to open it with something else ever again. I tried, ah, okay. and then it ends up screwing it up where I can't do it now because yeah, uh, I don't know how to change it, and I messed up the whole thing, and I end up not being able to open that file. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I'm not. From what I've seen, I don't. I don't run Windows 8. From what I've seen, I definitely prefer Windows 7. I'm not a big fan of yes. the new interface and everything. The only thing, though, I don't like. Um, I have Windows Vista right now, and I don't like Windows Vista because there is one thing I don't like. It's uh, this is what I usually would like to use for editing, and it's Windows Movie Maker. But I'm using Windows Movie Maker live if I when I had Windows Vista. So it the editing is so much different. And now when I edit a video, I can't put it on YouTube though because there's some problem with um, the format. Yeah, those are exactly the kind of technical problems that I run into every time I try to use a new program. Like, let's say Fraps doesn't work with the video with the game that I'm trying to record. So then yes. I I have to try a new program, and then all kinds of just in inconvenient long stuff happens. Yeah, it's annoying, but I tried fixing it. But what I was trying to do, I was going to take a screen. I was going to screen record 
my video that I have edited. I was planning on doing it, but I thought it was just too ridiculous. Screen record my video, like, that I've edited. It was, it took forever, you know, I don't really feel like going through all that to make one video. I didn't feel like it. Right. So now I'm just going to have to leave my videos without any editing. And I tried, luckily with Bandicam, I do have the ability to pause videos. I didn't know that before. Oh, that'll be good. Yeah, so that'll be much easier for me if I can cut out some parts. <laughs> that's, <But yeah. laughs> that's always good. <laughs> I know I've needed to do, do that a few times, or rather I should have done that a few times when I didn't, yes. and I just left it in for comic relief. <laughs> yeah, because uh, I actually tried doing a video once. It was so boring because um, I didn't know that you could pause it and uh, leave it off, like cut it out. I didn't know you could do that, and I was I was doing a Minecraft video, and I was just sitting there mining blocks, and it took <laughs> I was just sitting there for a long, long time. Especially and when you start out with your wooden pickaxe, right? Yeah, you start off with a wooden <laughs> pickaxe, and it takes forever to mine something, and then it's not entertaining at all when you're just sitting there. Yeah. And you run out of something to talk about, you run out <laughs> of something to say, and then throughout that whole video, I realize I'm not even talking. Yeah, I know that feeling all too well, running out of things to talk about. <laughs> all right, let's see here. I think we might have time for just about one more before yeah. we can wrap this up. Yeah, let's, um, we should do that. Let's see. Oh, this one. These were just random 30-second questions that I was going to put up. Um, I was going to actually put up, like, 10 questions, and then you would have to answer them within 30 seconds. Ah, perfect. All right, we'll do that. All right, um... I wish I had a timer or something. Oh, I'll use my fingers. <laughs> um, I have a timer. One sec. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm back. Ready. Okay. Um, go ahead and tell me when you're going to start. Uh, can I hear the question first? <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Well, go ahead. Um. Wait, let me add one more question because this is extremely short because there's okay. only one, two, three, four, five, six. There's only six questions. I'm pretty sure you can answer that extremely that. quickly. Um, let me think of two questions. Uh, what's... One more question. Um, here's... I'll start. Use one word to describe yourself. Blah. Uh, uh, that's not the word I choose. Um, <laughs> red. 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 <laughs> okay. What's your favorite color? Purple. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite food? Sushi. What's your favorite word? Okay, I'm going to say um, implausible because okay. <laughs> that's a very smart sounding word, but if you guys think that there's a word that I use disproportionately too often, <laughs> leave a comment down below and vote on it. What, what word do I say too much or too often or all the time? Okay. All right. What's your favorite animal? <laughs> cats. I love last cats. One. All right. The last one. What's the most ridiculous word you can think of? Ridiculous. Fondue. Fondue. All right, and that's it. <laughs> fondue. It took me forever. It took me years to realize what fondue actually was. So, short little... I think that was a real thing. What is fondue? Fondue is, like, something that was really popular, I think, back in the 70s, where you'd get this big pot and melt cheese in it, and then you would just dip random foods into it. And then you would have ran then you have melted cheese on your random food. <laughs> <laughs> it's very I seafood, I hate seafood. Oh, do you? Yes, I hate seafood so much. Uh -huh. um, I there are so many foods, like I have the weirdest tongue ever. Um <laughs> like I always I even vomited when I ate tofu because it had no flavor. Mm. Uh, it tasted like chicken and it had no flavor and it made me want to vomit. I've I vomited eating shrimp. I vomited eating uh all this sorts of stuff. I hate seafood so much. Uh, and anything, uh, I guess something way too raw, I will hate it too. 
Wow. Yeah, I'm not huge on fish, but uh, I just am. I love sushi, and I went my, I went probably most of my life without ever tasting sushi for the probably tasted sushi for the first time six years ago, and so I was I was 20, and uh, like sushi. <laughs> Personally. Um, I would never eat sushi because it's raw fish. <laughs> right. Yeah. Once you get over that, that's why I didn't either. Once you get, once you don't think about what it is, and I mean, I'm a huge fan of soy sauce. So oh. I mean, I dip it in. I don't eat sushi unless I put soy sauce on it. Go ahead. Wait, what were we talking about? Uh, oh. I think talking about that I liked sushi, and you, yes. you don't like raw food, probably. Yes, that was it. Um, <laughs> something else. No, this happens to me far too much. I get distracted too easily. I am very easily distracted. Yep, that's but, one thing I have in school. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> if, uh, if anybody else has some questions that they feel were left out or maybe some topics that they wanted me to elaborate on a bit more, just go ahead and uh, comment them down below and then rate them. And, uh, you know, we could do this again and we can yes. kind of do a, a more more you based questions if yes. uh whatever you guys would like to hear so oh. thank you very much andrew okay well thank you yeah. so much to you, rose i loved doing this with you oh i did too it was so much fun yes me too i so. always wanted to speak to you because you were my idol and uh, oh wow <laughs> thank you so much okay that's very flattering <laughs> well, i hope you take care and we will see you guys later